Good evening, good evening, good evening, and thank you all for joining Monumental Moments in God's Word. I am your host, Evangelist Dr. Marla Facey, and I'm coming to you all today live, and I just hope that you enjoy the word that God has given me on today to give his people. So with that being said, we're going to get right on in the word. It's a good, rich word, and I just thank God for it. Uh, my name, again, is Evangelist Dr. Marla Facey, and I'm coming to you from the great state of Maryland, praise God. And today, I just want to um, start out with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Here I am again, Lord, your servant. Lord, just saying yes to you, yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to you each and every day, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for bringing me out, Lord God. I thank you for saving a wretch like me. I thank you for, for coming in and changing my life, Lord God. I praise you on today. I thank you, Lord God, that you fearfully and wonderfully made me, Lord God. And it's not anything that I do within myself, but it is you that makes me come forth. It's you that brings healing to the soul. It's you that brings deliverance, Lord God. And we forever thank you. We give you the glor glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise because it's all rightfully yours, Lord God. There's nothing that we can do without you, Lord God. And I just praise your name and I thank you. I thank you for the, the listeners, Lord God from north, south, east, and west. Lord, I praise your name, Lord God, because you have uh, yet put us in the, uh, kept us in the land of the living, Lord God. Thank you for just the opportunity of one more day to get things right with you. Father, forgive me for anything that I've done, anything that I've said, any mind that, that was not like you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a God that forgives and you sit high and you look low and you and you, you, you are the uh, omnipresent, omnipotent, hallelujah, my uh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Father God, I thank you for every good and perfect thing. I thank you for the uphills and the downs, Lord God, the goods and the bads. Because, Lord, without those things, I wouldn't have been taught. Without those things, I wouldn't have known that there was a difference. So, Father, I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, and Lord God, bless the ears that hear thus your word on today, Lord God. Bless them in a mighty way. Keep them, Lord God, so that they will be kept. Lord God, I praise you, and I'll forever thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now we're going to do our warrior's prayer. Heavenly Father, your warrior prepares for battle. Today, I claim victory over Satan by putting on the whole armor of God. I put on the girdle of truth. May I stand firm in the truth of your word so I will not be a victim of Satan's lies. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. May it guard my heart from evil so that I will remain pure and holy, protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. I put on the shoes of peace. Glory to God. May I stand firm in the good news of the gospel. So your peace will shine through me and be a light to all those that I encounter. I take the shield of faith. May I be ready for Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit so that I won't be vulnerable to spiritual defeat. I put on that helmet of salvation. Lord, may it keep my mind focused on you and you alone so that Satan will not have a stronghold on any of my thoughts. I take the sword of the spirit. May that two-edged sword of your word be ready in my hands so that I can expose those tempting words of Satan. By faith, your warrior has put on the whole armor of God. Now I am prepared to live this day in spiritual victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so today we're going to be talking about you've been in that condition too long. You've been in that condition too long. The, you've been in that condition long enough. It's time to make that change. How y'all know that song? It's time to make that change. 
That's what it is. It's time to make that change. You've been in that condition too long. But first, we're going to hear we're going to hear a, 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 a song. We're going to hear a song. Uh, y'all know I love my music, and uh, today we're going to uh, we're going to play a song by. Um, let's see. Hold on. Let me make sure I get my music right, y'all. I got to get it pulled up. Got to get it pulled up. Um, I want to hear. Uh, he wants it all. He wants it all. Hallelujah. He wants it all. I don't have any rights to this music. He wants it all. That song was He Wants It All by Forever Jones. Forever Jones. And I don't have any rights to that music, but that's one of the songs that I wanted to play. Thank God. So we are going to go on with our word on today. Hallelujah. And my, my I got some scriptures, so I want y'all to write these scriptures down. John, St. John chapter 5, 6 through 11. St. James 5, 6, chapter 5, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And Ezekiel 37 and 9. 
soul. If you've ever been in your situation for a long time and you don't know how, don't see any way out, and nothing is changing, I mean nothing is changing. You may need to stop what you've been doing. Start doing something else. Change up a little bit. If your life gets better in any substantial way, it will be because of something you do or something you did to change those circumstances that now has produced a better outcome. In John 5, we find the account of a man who was crippled couldn't walk. And for 38 years, this man had been at the same spot doing the same thing. How many of you all been at the same point of your life and it seems like nothing that you do have changed anything? You keep doing the same thing over and over again, doing the same thing over again every day. But this man did it for 38 years in the same spot, doing things better expecting a different outcome. Now, there is something to be said about his consistency and his patience. He definitely was patient and he definitely was consistent. But this may be going a little bit too far. Or was it? Because everything's done in God's timing. How about that? But John 5, 6, and 7, when Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto From me, Charlotte's VA. Wilt thou? I'm sorry for that. Um, that interruption. You can't stop everything, and that was my doctor. Hallelujah! And I meant to put my ringer on silent, so let me do that. But anyway, um, let me get back to where I was. I don't want to lose my spot. Um, let me go back over that verse. So John 5, 6, and 7 says, When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, unto him Wilt thou be made whole? He's asking a question. Are you ready to be made whole? Are you ready to be made whole? You've been doing this for 38 years. Are you ready to do something different? Now to you, that may sound a little bit like Jesus is asking a foolish question or he's asking something that really sounds like really crazy to the regular human being maybe. But the text says that Jesus knew he had been there a long time because you know nothing get past Jesus, right? So you know he'd been there for a long time. Jesus knew he'd been there for a long time. Jesus knew that God had made provisions for healing for his covenant people. He knew that. Remember? What he has said about the woman in the temple that day who was all bent over. Y'all remember that story. She was all bent over. But in Luke 13 and 16, And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan have bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath day? Covenant people have rights. Oh, y'all hear that all the time. God had provided for his own people. Why hadn't this man tapped into what God had already provided? Why didn't this man already be healed after 38 years? Why did he just continue to do the same old thing day in and day out? Maybe he just liked to hang around the place for a while. Maybe he just liked to see who he could see and, and, and watch the people go by. And I don't know what his reason was. Maybe he liked the people pitying him. Maybe he liked getting the little free handouts. I don't know. I don't know. So we can't really guess why he did what he did. But some folks, you know, they're just like that. I'm going to do the same thing the same way um, all the time. And, uh, and until there's a change, I'm going to keep doing it. Um, they hang on to their sicknesses. They hang on to their sicknesses. And they hang on. 
But you know, I guess what I say is some people just hang around and they hang on to their sicknesses, they hang on to their problems. So they'll have something to talk about. It keeps them busy. It keeps them relevant. Some folks don't want God to heal them because it keeps them relevant. It keeps them out front. People got, they, they enjoy the, the, uh, the pity that people give them. Because when they, they'll have to go to work if they get healed. They got to do this if they get healed. If you've been in your situation for a long time and nothing is changing, you may need to just stop what you've been doing and start doing something a little bit different. Start doing something a little bit different. Start doing something a little bit different. We got, you know, we can't stay in the same vein all the time. We got to want to do something different. If your life gets better in any type of way, it will be because you did or are doing something different. Or you stopped doing something that you was doing and you went and changed things around a little bit. God has provided everything you need for you to be successful in this life. And godly. Wishing won't change your life. You can wish all day that you're going to win. You're going to be a millionaire. You can wish all day that you win the lotto. You can wish all day that somebody's going to drop thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in your bank account. But I'm going to tell you, that's very rare if it all ever happened. Complaining won't make things better. Being jealous of what somebody else does or criticizing what somebody else is doing or justifying yourself for the lack thereof or what you, justifying why you don't do nothing or why you can't change. That's just, that's just to appease your own conscience for the fact that you are inconsistent. Inconsistency will not make your life better. But being inconsistent makes your life worse. So that's why I say consistency that that man had for 38 years. But y'all know being inconsistent can also be like quicksand. The more you walk in that junk, the more you continue to stay in the quicksand and to try and keep moving around, it sinks you quicker. You get deeper and deeper into it. And pretty soon, you can't get out of it. You may need to get out of, you may need to move out of that place. You may need to, do something different. You can't be afraid to do something different because fear is not of God. James 1 and 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. Now you've got to ask having faith. You can't say, God, I ask you for wisdom for that situation on one hand and then turn right around and then just absolutely disregard everything and try to pick up the things and do them yourself. I just don't have any idea what I'm going to do now. You can't keep, you can't go from one hand believing God to turn around saying, I don't see how it's going to happen. I don't trust it. I don't trust nobody. I can't. If you're going to bother to ask God, you ought to love God and respect God enough to believe that he will answer your prayers. He will answer when you ask him something. That's just the kind of God that we serve. But the question that Jesus was asking is, do you really want to be changed? Do you really want to be different? Do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to be made whole? And that's a very valid question to any and all of us. Do we really want to be made whole? But you know that answer is in John 5 and 7. The impotent, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. 
So he's making a, he's, he's saying, you know what? I don't have nobody when the, when the water's stirring and, and everybody's getting blessed. I don't have nobody that will pick me up and put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Every time I try to get closer, somebody else stands in front of me and I can't get to the pool. So he's giving, he's telling God, I, I, I tried to get to the pool. People walk past me. People don't help me. People go before me. People cut in line. And they get in the pool and they get blessed. But I can't get to the pool. But Jesus says unto them, rise, take up thy bed and walk. He said, no excuses. Just get up, pick up your bed and walk. Now, this is where people like to say, this is where. I'm putting you to the test. This is where a decision has to be made. It's one thing to say you want your you want your uh want things to change, but it's another thing to step out and do it. Step out on faith and do it. It's something else to actually do something about it when you say you want something changed. But you know, this dude has another problem. He has to do what Jesus said if he if he's going to get what he wants, he's got to be obedient to what the Lord said in order for him to be blessed, in order for the, him to see that change. But he knew that it was right because God told him, pick up your bed and pick up your bed, get up, pick up your bed and walk. According to the laws back then of the day to carry his bed on the Sabbath. So now he has to make a decision. Do I do what God says or do I do what these people say? Because I'm not supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath. But you know, the man picked up his bed and off he went. He was healed at that point. But look at verses 10 and 11. The Jews therefore said unto him that you cured, that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is unlawful. For thee to carry thy bed. He answered them and said, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Thirty-eight years he had been at that pool. And all the lawmen, all the, the police officers, all the city officials of that day had ever have, had never done anything to really help him out. They walked past him. They cut in line before him. They acted as though he wasn't even there. But the man who made him whole had said to him, take up, get up, take up thy bed and walk and walk. So to him, it was wise to do what the man with the power to make him whole told him to do. He didn't worry about it. He didn't care what other people thought about him. He didn't even think about or care about the, tradi the traditions, which had never done anything for him. But all it is, is you have to make a choice. You've got to make a choice to follow Jesus, no matter who gets upset. No matter whose traditions you break, it don't matter. Your boss may have the power to fire you, true enough, but Jesus has the power to provide for you. Jesus has the, the power to keep that boss from firing you. He has the power to give you something better. Your friends may leave you. They may walk away, but Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, though I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Your family may turn their backs on you, but God wants to adopt you into his family, into the new family. We have to make a choice. We have to make a choice to go with, the, with what works and not to just worry about what's normal and expected for 38 years. The Lord is saying that you've been in this life situation long enough. It may be in your finances, your marriage, your health, your jobs, 
your calling, your ministry, your residence, your relationships. God says you need a change now. So in Deuteronomy 2, 2 and, 2 and 3 says, And the Lord spoke unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. God even tells you where to turn. Where to turn and how to turn. The Lord is saying that you've been in this life situation long enough. It may be in your finances. It may be in all those different things we do. But God said you need a change now. I'm talking to somebody out there. You may be in a relationship that is not going anywhere. That person doesn't love the Lord and he's not. He or she is not going to try to change. You've been in the situation long enough. One of the greatest changes in the Bible was found in the book of Ezekiel 37 and 9. It says, also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. There was a wind of change and the dry bones lives again. Dry bones live again. God is willing to bring that wind of change into your life today if you allow him to. Are you ready to have that change? Are you really ready to make that change? Are you, are you willing and ready to make that change? The Bible mentioned two great people who were desperate for the move of God in their lives. There was Zacchaeus, the wee little man. That's in the book of Luke, verses four. So he ran ahead and climbed in the sycamore tree to see him, to see Jesus. Since Jesus was just coming that way, he just wanted to see Jesus. I think Zacchaeus was so motivated to see Jesus because there was a great need in his life that drove him to run and climb up in that sycamore tree. Something within him desperately hoped that seeing Jesus would make a difference in his life. Then there's Jabez. Jabez. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, I mean, excuse me, in 1 Chronicles 4 and 9, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I borne him in pain. Because I had him in pain, I'm going to name him Jabaz. Jabaz. Jabaz prayed a prayer that changed the meaning of his name. Jabaz asked God in verse 10, saying, Keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. He said, I need to do a new thing. He knew that his name was, was the word for the word pain. And he was best, he was desperate to change and not have his name mean pain. He didn't want to live a life of pain. God saw his willingness and his situation was changed for the better. But y'all know there are some things that we do that can cause, hinder, hinder us from the changes that God wants in our lives. One of those things that are that hinder us is our bitterness. Be better, don't be bitter. Bitterness is one of the most dangerous and destructive of your human emotions. It makes someone be filled with what can't happen instead of what really can happen. You'll start believing what can happen. You'll start thinking, well, this ain't going to happen and that ain't going to happen. Instead of saying, Lord, I know you provide. I know you, I know you can do this. I know, I trust you, Lord. And then next comes that unbelief. Bitterness, Hebrews 12 and 15. But unbelief is in Mark 6, 5 and 6. If you have unbelief in your heart, God can't help you if you have a change. You've got to, you've got to trust and believe what you want God to do for you. Then there's always that blame game. 
everybody else was at fault. All my family's at fault. My brothers and sisters. Everybody's at fault. Everybody did something but me. We need to admit when we make mistakes and we've caused our own problems. We got to be honest with God, just like Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus was that person that had been swindling people and all that stuff. And Zacchaeus said, I know I need a savior. And I heard that Jesus was coming into town. So I'm going to run up in that sycamore tree because I know that if I just see him, it's going to make a change in my life. Then there's the other thing that hinders us is unforgiveness. Matthew 5 and 23 says, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a sin, y'all. The Bible tells us that if we don't know, if we don't forgive others, God, our Father in heaven, will not forgive us of our sins. So forgiveness is already a sin. Unforgiveness is already a sin. And it hinders your prayer life. It hinders and creates a, 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 a big hole, a big gap between God and you when you can't forgive other people. But what we got to do about this is we have to be desperate for change. We have to be consistent and desperate for change. We got to want to see it, believe it's going to happen, and work on it. Forgive and forget and let go and let God. We got to be motivated for change. Sometimes, you know, that song said, I have to encourage myself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Okay, yes, we got to encourage ourselves. Have, we have to have a vision and stay focused. Have a vision and stay focused. Be a friend of God and have faith in him. Allow God to be your best friend. Allow God to be your daddy, your father, your husband, your, your, your wife, your daughter, your mama. And pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. Job 14 and 14. The only one who can delay your blessing is you by not trusting and believing. We need to let go and let God. We got to allow God to do what he's going to do. We need to be people who are desperate for the move of God in our lives. So just knowing that if you're facing any impossible situation, like this man that we're talking about, that's set by the pool for 38 years, when you become desperate and you're facing that impossible situation, and you are at the edge of that, of losing hope. Saying, you know what, God? If I get to year 39 and you ain't done what you're going to do, I'm going to give up. If I'm, a, if I'm at year 40 still sitting by this pool, I'm going to give up. You can't lose hope. And I'm glad to say to you today that impossibilities are platforms upon which God operates the most. Impossibilities. When things look impossible, that's when God operates in an enormous way. Job said in Job 14 and 14, all the days of my appointment time, I will wait till my change comes. Wait on God till your change comes. Wait till God passes you by and, 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 and you, 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 you feel that, you smell that fragrance of sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, you have come too far to lose hope. You're, you're 20. Don't you come too far to give up now. Please give Jesus your life today. By saying this prayer, 
thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross. I confess my sins to you, Father, and ask that you forgive me, Lord, and give me the power to sin no more. I don't want to be a sinner. I want to live my life completely with your guidance, with your love, and you being the head of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And y'all may say, you know what, <laughs> Evangelist Pacey, I just don't know what to do. But just do what Jesus tells you to do. You may say, how do I hear him? Read your word. He speaks through his word and pray. He speaks to you when you pray. Ask God to speak to you through his word. Ask God to guide and lead you. But you can't just do that sitting on your couch and sitting by the pool. You got to get in. You got to get up, take up your bed and walk. You got to get up and dip your own foot and get on in the pool. Get into the word if you want to hear from God. Get in the word. Pray. Seek his face. You've been in that condition long enough. It's time to make that change. May God bless you, bless you, bless you. You all have a good day. And thank you for joining Monumental Moments in God's Word for another day, another time. Hallelujah. And I'm going to play one more song to end this out today. Hallelujah. One more song. One more song. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to um, thank God. I just thank God for uh, monumental moments. It is it is a blessing. It is a blessing. And I praise God. I praise God for it. Um, Armor of God. Armor of God.
for you all. See you next week with monumental moments in God's word. Y'all have a blessed week. This is evangelist Dr. Marla Fancy. I'm out. God bless you.